welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. And as usual, we are going to take a look at those markets, see where did we close rather flat into the end of the week, but lots going on beneath the surface. We, of course, will cover that as well. I'm going to be talking about turnarounds and some base breakouts rotation, lots of very relevant information. From here, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at some of those headline news that drove price action last week. There was news at the beginning of the week where the Bank of Canada posted a surprise interest rate hike. And in turn, that did have the markets questioning whether the Federal Reserve would do the same. They have a very big meeting coming up next week. Of course, on Wednesday, they will announce their interest rate policy, as well as very close attention to PAL's press conference after as individuals and investors are on the lookout for potential rate policy going forward. We did see small cap cop stocks continue their advance from last week. Downtrend reversal took place. So we're going to take a look at that Russell 2000. Other news relating to outside of the U.S., China came out with economic data and they did see their exports drop by 7% versus last year. And that also got the markets a little nervous relative to global growth prospects. However, there were still bright spots within the markets relating to that rotation that we saw last week. Also, we did see weekly jobless claims climb to a two-year high. This is one of those metrics that the Federal Reserve pays attention to relative to employment and then inflation. So that was somewhat good news to yesterday. Next week, again, in addition to the Federal Reserve's position on interest rates, we are going to get very relevant inflation data by way of the core CPI and PPI data. So that is potentially going to be market moving. We did not have a lot in the way of economic data this week, hence the markets were a little sloppy, shall we say. So let's go ahead and get into it. Take a look at these broader markets. And here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500. A couple of metrics that I want to share with you. Number one is the fact that we are still above that first area of upside resistance from that March into May period. And we did, again, retain above that. That next area of resistance is 4,300. And we did touch and actually trade above that level. However, we closed with the S&P just below at 4298. This is a very widely followed level, this 4300. Many technicians, investors are on the lookout for a move above that to really give confidence relative to a continuation rally in the broader markets. From here, let's go ahead and take a look at the RSI trending upward above 50, as well as the stochastics, faster moving momentum indicator in positive territory trending upward. So in the end, the S&P was up about a half of a percent, but by and large, quite constructive price action with this back and fill into today's mid or small rally that was able to briefly push this above that 4,300 level. So net-net uptrend still in place here with the S&P 500. We're going to take a quick look here at the NASDAQ because this, of course, has been the leading indicator here. And a couple of metrics to pay attention to, 13,200 is the big level for the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ was flat for the week. And so that we did retain a level, I'm sorry, this should say above that 13,200. This is from a midweek uh, period. So we did close back above that 13200 level, which is good news. We have positive momentum with that RSI and stochastics. The NASDAQ finding support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average constructive there. Let's go ahead and take a quick look here at the small cap. This is the Russell 2000. I'm using IWM ETF. And what we can see here is this rally that took place last week on that news 
with the employment data that implied that we could see economic and hence corporate growth, and that did boost small caps as well as other cyclical areas also. But from here, we can see the price action this week in these small cap stocks did continue. The index was up about 1.5% relative to the S&P 500's half of a percent. We can see the RSI trending upward with the stochastics. Nice high volume on those rally days. So look for a period of consolidation here, a lot by way of down and out names. I did share with you a number of names in last week's video, if you haven't seen that. And I'm sure throughout today, I will be sharing with you additional small cap stocks that are trending higher. So from here, let's go ahead and be on the markets. Take a look at these 11 underlying sectors. And here we have a two-month daily price chart view of those sectors. I've added an RSI. And then in descending order relative to how they're positioned. So up here at the forefront, we have consumer discretionary technology and communication services these are, of course, the growthier areas of the market. However, I would argue that consumer discretionary is a cyclical because the names underlying there will be dependent, of course, upon the economic growth or expansion. We did see the discretionary sector of 2.7%. Now, I will tell you, Tesla was a big reason of 14.5% this week, but there are other vibrant spots in the discretionary area, which I will share with you. Technology was one of the underperformers, down 0.5% this week. However, let's take a quick look at this chart because what we developed here was a pullback to that 10-day moving average and then a potential advance. So still very much in a confirmed uptrend. You do want to be aware of the heavier weighted names in these sectors. And for technology, it is Apple and Microsoft and both names did underperform. Uh, with my MEM Edge report this weekend, I will get quite a bit more into what's shaping up here with this leading technology area. So let's go ahead and advance, take a look further at other areas that were on the move. This is the financial XLF ETF, a nice higher low that took place late last month, a continuation rally, looking to see how financials perform here at this 200 day, simple moving average, positive momentum. And from here in the next segment, I'll share with you an area in the financial that is beginning and continuing actually to perk up. Other sectors that I think you need to be aware of here are industrials XLI up one and a half percent. And we can see this nice base breakout developing here. This is all about that move into these cyclical areas such as industrials. I will be sharing with you some of the names there. And then also down here in this lower quartile remain these more defensive areas, healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples. So let's go ahead beyond these sectors and take a look. I have a number of ETFs that I find to be super useful in really getting a feel for other price action beyond the sector. You want to be aware of industry group movements because when you combine that sector and industry group affiliation with your underlying stock, almost 50% of your stock's move to the upside or downside is going to be directly related to that group that they are a part of. So same view here with the two-month daily price chart view, strength to weakness, and let's take a look. Semiconductors up here, they were up about a half percent this week. Just a beautiful looking chart. This is that gain here on semiconductors with NVIDIA's super strong numbers. And it did help push other semiconductor stocks higher. Nice pullback to this upward trending 10 day simple moving average, still very much in a nice confirmed uptrend AI and other chip related stocks continue to remain elevated. From here, let's take a look at some of these other sub-industry groupings, and we can see software experienced a very sharp pullback midweek. And this was that date that Canada came out with that interest rate hike. And in essence, it did bring up fears of a rate hike, which would not 
be good for these software stocks. They do tend to be super sensitive to that. Higher rates in turn reduce the growth numbers for growth stocks such as software, but the group was able to bounce, recover quite nicely, did end the week flat. As we take a look at some of these other groups, I talked about financials. Let's take a look at KRE. This is the regional banking ETF of almost 3%. And this is another area that will fare well if there is any kind of signal that the economy may be having any sort of robustness, really, and it will improve the lending uh, mar profit margins from lending for these banks. So nice downtrend reversal shaping up very nicely here. We want to make sure that the momentum indicators remain up here above 50 KRE, but we did get that MACD up there into positive territory. Other areas to be aware of, I talked about consumer cyclicals up almost 3% due to Tesla, but here's another reason. This is XRT, the S&P 500 retail ETF, and it was up over 3% for the week. Now, a number of the movers here are small cap names that are really down and out and buyers are coming in. We can see XRT is finding resistance at this 200 day simple moving average, but also quite simply this advance from 55 up to 63. This ETF is certainly due a pause. And one other area that I did want to share with you relative to these ETFs that are super useful as far as informing you what's taking shape in the markets. Here we are with the Dow Jones Transportation Index. And this index is not very widely followed, but it can be a true metric as it relates to investors' confidence, again, in growth. These transportation stocks are needed to move goods. But as we move through today, I am going to share with you some ETFs that can help you participate in the strength that's shaping up among some of these sub-industry groupings. And so that you don't have that need to pick individual stocks, you can participate in a broad based way. So from here, let's go ahead. And I did want to begin today by sharing with you what I'm calling high flying names. We're seeing a number of select stocks and this in case is AI. They did report earnings last week, big gap up on the numbers and a pullback. And quite simply, you can see these big exaggerated moves, pullbacks to support. And what I wanted to share with you is how you can use an intraday chart for those of you that are more active in your investing to gauge and potentially get you in or out of these particular stocks. And I do believe I marked this particular name up so that I can share with you in this 15 minute chart for AI. We are looking at price action from last week and to help identify buy signals because you're seeing a lot in the way of extreme moves and intraday volatility. So taking us back to June 5th, if you're on the lookout for a signal that this downtrend over this past two-day period has reversed, you will want to see the stock break back above the 5 and 13 simple moving average, get that RSI trending and then trading above this 50 net neutral. And then also we did have this early MACD black line up through the red signal. The stock can then be bought and held until we have the reverse with that RSI trending below that net neutral 50. And then we have that MACD in negative territory on high volume. But critical here is going to be a trade below the 5 and 13 simple moving average. And again, for active investors, I'll share with you one other name that was really on the move this week. They initially came out and pre-announced positive numbers. And then later on in the week, there was really discussion relative to that number being only a one-time add-on for the company. It's also highly shorted. This is Carvana, C-V-N-A, 63% of their shares are shorted. So you want to talk about volatility. So here we are with that 15-minute view. Very simple. Again, sharing with you, here we are in the gap up on the open here. The stock trades 
quite a bit higher. But then once we get those momentum indicators trending lower, the price breaks below those simple moving averages, and we have that MACD crossover time to exit. Now, I did talk about that concept relative to using ETFs, so I'm going to share with you a couple that crossed my screening this week. And first up, let's just take a quick look at Tesla. It's been on the move for several weeks here. Here's a daily price chart, and we can see the advance began during mid-May and has continued. Now, at this point, you're certainly not early in if you were considering entering the stock. But I did want to share with you if we were to get anything in the way of a pullback and a potential other leg up in Tesla, I've added this five-day simple moving average. There actually is an ETF that will provide you with one and a half times the performance of Tesla, T-S-L-L. -L. And this is something that is becoming more prominent among these mega cap names, where you have the ability to not only take advantage of advances in the stock, in this case, one and a half times. And T-S-L-L -L is the ticker symbol. Here's another ETF. I talked about transportation stocks last week. The biggest movers were airline stocks. They're continuing to see a huge demand in airline for their flights. And this particular ETF is JETS. You can see the nice advance. A couple of names here that are hitting near-term high. This is uh, Delta Airlines, D-A-L. We also, big performer last week was Alaska Air. So that J-E-T-S setting up quite nicely here. Nice uptrend as it continues to trend higher. And then also with this move into AI-related and robotic-related stocks, there are a couple of ETFs here that we can take a quick look at. And first up is Robo. R-O-V-O, -O, very appropriately named. When you're looking at these ETFs, it's going to be really important that you have a good handle of the top holdings among that ETF so that if there is any deterioration, you will see it reflected. But with R-O-B-O, -O, I've added that five-day simple moving average and a nice confirmed uptrend pullbacks to that five-day. Oftentimes, it's quite helpful to use historical precedents. And with R-O-B-O -O, taking us back to January of this year, pull back to that five day until not, until we begin to break below. But for now, in a very nice confirmed uptrend, uh, one of the bigger holdings in this particular ETF is Samsara IOT. This is a robotic organization that helps manufacturing and elsewhere really streamline their productivity through the use of these robotics. And I think we have one other ETF because I talked to you about industrials on the move. This is ITA, the US Aerospace and Defense ETF. And take a look, we can see this had a nice downtrend reversal that really firmed up this week with ITA breaking back above that 50-day simple moving average, your MACD now in positive territory, as is the RSI. So I will actually be sharing with you a couple of aerospace and defense and other industrial stocks that are really firming up quite nicely. And as long as we're on that subject, I do need to share with you one of the uh, absolute bellwether names. And this is Caterpillar. If you have not seen it, it really is in the throes of a very nice downtrend reversal here. Take a look at this volume on these rally days. And as you know, Caterpillar, of course, is very much in the industrial space. Interesting that it's faring well, despite news that China's economy might not be as strong, but can't argue with this chart with the move above that 50 day and your momentum up there in positive territory. From here, I will go ahead and share with you some of these other names in the industrial space. And it really is pretty widespread with the move. Here we are with Rockwell Automation, they are all about industrial automation, which I mentioned to you before as being highly relevant to improving profitability among these manufacturers. And here we are, we can see a nice base breakout. We can go back. This is a stock that I do recall talking about back here because we experienced very similar price action. We did have that pullback, but 
are okay, had a very nice advance beyond that. And here again, with this nice base breakout, let's take a look at another well-known company, certainly within the industrials. And here we are with Parker Hannafin, PH, again, on its way to a nice base breakout. This company is all about hydraulics, and these areas are really seeing a lot in the way of vibrancy. Uh, this is Franklin Electric, F-E-L-E. -L -E. And for any of these companies, you can go ahead and pull up a full quote. And in turn, it will provide you with, if they are providing a dividend, this is a little bit below 1%. Also that market cap at 4.6 billion is included. And we can see the stock also experienced a very nice base breakout last week. Last up is GWW, and this is a plumbing and lighting, and it's an add-on to the move into housing stocks. So GWW, nice downtrend reversal into a base breakout with positive momentum. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look elsewhere because I want to share with you names that are experiencing downtrend reversals. And I did talk about that concept that particularly among small cap names, you are going to see a lot of stocks that are off 50 to 80% and buying is beginning to come in. Here's a small cap uh, software stock that I'm really quite familiar with. It's bill.com and they provide accounting back office work for small uh, companies. And we can see that the stock had a very nice gap up on earnings and a bit of a period of digesting. This was a very big move from this 80 all the way up to 100. Nice back and fill period of consolidation. And then this week has broken above this 200-day simple moving average. Now, one of the reasons I am drawn to it is because I'm going to see if we can capture this on the monthly, not so much, perhaps on the weekly, but really want to highlight the fact that when the stock gets going, it really can experience a very nice advance. When those numbers are there, the stock is very uh, highly regarded by Wall Street. And that's something from my many years of work that I'm really familiar with the names that are going to have that predisposition to outperform. And here's a great example, because this is a name that I put on my MEM Edge report back here when we experienced actually uh, yes, when we did break up above this 200-day simple moving average, had everything to do with the release of the company's earnings with this gap up, and it was viewed as very pivotal. This is Datadog, D-D-O-G, another former high flyer when software names were moving, and the uh, announcement of new large clients really had investors very, very interested in the concept that they had turned the corner. So let's take a look at what could potentially happen when you have a stock reverse its downtrend on positive earnings, nice high volume here, and you can see this really nice advance using the five-day simple moving average. So at this overbought position, I'm going to be writing more about this over the weekend because as mentioned, it is one of the few select software names on the buy list. But again, more important for now is this concept of the, how these stocks really can get elevated and moving once they reverse their downtrend. Another name here, taking a look at, this is an AI related. This is GitLab, G-T-L-B, gap up this week, nice period of consolidation. I'm gonna be keeping my eye on that name. It's not quite as, uh, vibrant by way of market cap, but certainly worth paying attention to. Roku has been in the throes of a downtrend reversal as well. Lots of good news out about that company. And then another software name that we can take a look at is FIVN. Same concept here where it's broken above each of these moving averages. And as opposed to these moving averages acting as resistance on rallies, the moving averages now act as support as the stock continues to advance. And 
one other area that we can just take a very quick look at because we are running out of time. I talked about aerospace and defense. I'll just share with you two stocks. Boeing, certainly very well known, had a very lengthy period of go nowhere, but we can see it really woke up last week. Momentum shifted into positive territory. And one other name that we can take a look at that is more of a downtrend reversal in those industrials, and that's Raytheon, RTX. And I'm sharing that same concept where it's broken above key resistance. We now have that MACD in positive territory. Nice high volume on those rally days. And the RSI is up there in positive territory. And that's it for this week. Everyone, please hit that like button if you like what you've seen. Any comments are always welcome as are questions. And I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. I'm going to look for you again here next Friday. Take care.